So good evening, dear colleague. My name is Mara Scandroglio and I work in Milan here in San Rafael Hospital. And it's a great pleasure for me to open and share this webinar. The title is The Transition from Temporary to Durable Mechanical Circulatory Support, Strategies of Winning and Recovery from MCS. We will have three lectures from three leading centers for the advanced treatment of cardiogenic shock. And from San Rafael Hospital here in Milan, Dr. Marina Pieri from University Hospital in Leuven, Professor, Professor Dieter Daune from German Art Institute Berlin, Professor Evgeny Potapov. Lecture will be followed by a Q&A session open to all of you. And each lecture will be preceded by a single question poll with three possible answers. Then right after, we will read and comment the results of the poll. The subject that brings us here this afternoon is of great interest in the field of cardiogenic shock and mechanical support. It's very actual and attractive for new horizon in the care of shock. And I'm glad to share today appointments with colleagues who are utmost experts in this field. And I'm absolutely honored to have them sitting with me around this multidisciplinary remote table. With me, there is uh, Professor Christoph van der Brille, cardiologist and intensivist at the University Hospital of Leuven. Professor van der Brille, in addition to being a great expert in the coagulation aspects and antithrombotic therapy for critically ill, is also deeply involved in heart failure scenarios. And we will share together the today webinar. Okay, the webinar is hosted here by San Raffaele Hospital, the San Raffaele Hospital um, Science Institute. Uh, is, uh, um, was founded in 1969 and represents a clinical excellence center for scientific research and education. It's uh, the largest biomedical uh, science park in Italy. And moreover, the anesthesia and intensive care unit is one of the most prolific group in the field of anesthesia and intensive care in Italy, with 150 peer-reviewed publications per year. And since 2015, the ACT-IC Fellowship Program in Cardiothoracic and Vascular Anesthesia is hosted at our university and is open for submission. Fellowships have been brought now uh, to uh, five versus the old three per year. And we have already welcomed a dozen of fellows from at least five countries who have completed their training in cardiothoracic and vascular anesthesia and intensive care. And uh, now I want to leave the floor to Mary Jo from Canada who was a fellow here and would like to comment on her experience. I think that she can connect directly and we can listen to her. Thank you very much. It's so nice to see familiar faces. Hi. Uh, so thanks for inviting me. Um, like uh, Professor Scambrolio said, I was a fellow back in 2018 uh, in Milan and uh, did cardiovascular there as well as intensive care. Uh, Milan is a uh, center with the highest uh, standards, uh, with a very high volume of, uh, of patients as well. And uh, with them, I had the opportunity myself to be involved uh, in several cases uh, um, where we use the uh, VA ECMOs and uh, transition to more permanent devices. Um, I had a wonderful time and I brought uh, all this uh, experience with me uh, to uh, Montreal in Canada. So... Just wanted to share with you good words about Milan. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mary Jo. Very Pleasure. happy to see, to see you again. And we wait uh, some other fellows here. Okay, so now we have to go on. The Sarafaire Hospital has uh, been running the MCS program since 2009 and has become one of the most committed in Italy and in Southern Europe for number of treated patients in recent years. The program, as you can see, encompasses an active team 24 seven 
of um, uh, ICU doctors, anesthesiologists and cardiologists uh, working together in ICU on a daily basis. And the care of cardiogenic shock ranges from temporary mechanical support to LVAD. And we are a referral center for out of hospital cardiac arrest and a CPR with more than uh, 300 cases of a CPR. And let's now peer into the topic, uh, treating a complex syndrome as a cardiogenic shock is, gives rise to topics that are still debated. And the interest is actually high because we are facing a life-threatening condition of various origin, worsened by high mortality, and for which technologies are booming in recent years. In addition, in addition to these, we can say that an increased number of patients are now surviving the acute phase of cardiogenic shock, thanks to improved treat them, treatment from the beginning, thanks to uh, the diffusion of protocols of referral in a classical hub and spoke model. And uh, I think that they would be even more useful if, uh, if streamlined, but we have time to, to speak about that. And uh, this paves the way to relatively new concept of transition from temporary mechanical support to final therapy. Uh, when uh, transition is not only a waiting time, but uh, a tactive phase of care. And uh, uh, the goal of bridging a patient to next therapy is to bridge him or her in the best possible conditions. And uh, these are the two open questions that uh, uh, the next lectures will uh, clarify. The first one, how to support the patients after the acute phase. And the second one, how to best manage the transition of cardiogenic shock survivors to final therapy.